Let's get more now from our defence and security analyst, Professor Michael Clark, is back with us. Professor, thank you so much for coming in and talking us through this. Sverodonetsk, why is it so important? Yes, Kimberly, it's important because the Russians put so much into it. It's the last real city in Luhansk and the Russians want the whole of the Donbass, so they've got to take Luhansk, which is the smaller of the two oblasts in, in that area. They uh, have got most of Sverodonetsk now. It looks as if the Ukrainians have been pushed back to the west of the city against the river into the industrial area, where, interestingly, there are tunnels and nuclear bunkers, as there was at the Avastal Steelworks, and we'll see if they make use of that, or whether they withdraw in good order to uh, Lysychansk on the other side of the river where they can hold up the Russian advance. By and large, the Russians are north and east of the river, the Sviesko Donets River. The Ukrainians are south and west of the river. Um, and the river is quite an obstacle. Nobody actually wants to be the first to have to try to cross the river. The Russians have tried twice, made a complete hash of it, lost a lot of people. They've still got to get across the river in force to continue this advance, they would hope, towards Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. Why is it so hard to get across the river? Dangerous, that's all. Oh. The, the crossing the river means you're very vulnerable, and if the other side sees you do it, or try to do it, then they can target it with artillery and so on. That's what happened last time. Oh, OK, let's talk about artillery, because we've just heard the Kremlin saying that the US, by sending them specific weapons, they're just adding fuel to the fire. What are those weapons? Yes, this, uh, the big photograph on the left here, this is the M142, which is a multiple launch rocket system. It's a very good system, very flexible, extremely accurate. Um, it carries six missiles and they've got a range of about 45 miles. <clears throat> um, it's not the biggest range weapon, but it's probably the most useful for the Ukrainians at the moment. It contrasts with the, the Russian systems. The Russians have got the Grad system, again, a uh, range of about 25 uh, of 30 miles. The, the old Grad system, the one at the top here, is an old Cold War system, very inaccurate. Down here, the Smirsch, uh, much more modern Russian system, about the same as the uh, M142, um, but not nearly as accurate. And so when we think about weapon systems, we, we often talk about game changers, but if the Ukrainians get enough of these soon enough, they will be a game changer because they can compete with Russian artillery, which is the Russian strong suit. The Russians are really good with artillery. They use it an awful lot. If the Ukrainians can outrange them, keep the, their artillery away, then they, their other virtues, as it were, their military virtues, can come through, and they have a real chance, then, of, of fighting the Russians to a standstill. OK, let's go back to the actual fighting on the ground. In the south, around Kherson, what is happening there? Yes, um, the uh, Ukrainians have mounted quite a big counterattack, um, and what they're trying to do to the northeast of Kirshen. And in the last day, they've taken uh, or punched through three places at uh, Sunarivka, at Davidev Brid, and at Vysokopilia, which I'd never heard of until yesterday. But looking at that um, uh, front, that's about a 50 mile front. And so it's interesting that, that the Ukrainians are trying to threaten Russian communications to Kirshen. They're trying to cut off the Russian incursion. And they're behaving like a Western army, whereas the, the Russians are going bite and hold in very small sections. The Ukrainians are behaving... They're doing it the way we would do it, which is to try to punch through in very quick offensives at key strategic places. They're doing pretty well at the moment. See how they get on. This is only the beginning of what they would intend, and we'll see how the Russians react if their communication lines start to be threatened.